Hello everybody and welcome back to Muramasa the Demon's Blade. We're officially in the post game. Now from the last two innings we got a couple new swords. Well a couple by I mean two. We got the Threads of Fate and uh, oh shit what's the other name? Uh, Descent into Despair I believe. That's completely wrong probably. But also since we completed both campaigns we also got a new sword tree to access. So let's start it off uh, proper. Right now I'm actually trying to look for the swords I unlocked. I don't realize at this point that they are uh, on each side of the tree, not the center tree. Yeah, Descent into Misery and Threads of Fate. Those are the two swords that we got, and by getting both of them we also unlock the center uh, sword tree. Now, as the game also mentioned, we need these two swords to unlock the alternate endings, but we're not going to do those quite yet. Much to my, uh, much to my mistake. But we'll cover that when the time comes. For now, we're going to have Momohime kill all the bosses that Kisuke fought. Starting with Suchigumo. Now there is a way to do these bosses that I would recommend, however I'm doing this in the order I did them because A I was scatterbrained and B I didn't realize. One boss offered a certain reward that's really fucking good and you should probably get it. In the meantime though, let's get a new sword. I gotta equip it later, but let's get the Blade of the Moon God. So I'm gonna let you all know right now, Suchiguma is a lot harder because I don't have access to the quick draw longsword. Well, technically I do, but um, I believe that's somewhere around what a level 20, 30 weapon. And in chaos mode, um, bosses scale damage-wise and HP-wise to your level. That means I would burn out my sword through quick draws and still not kill the little MacGuffins. However, uh, I got some good alternates, kinda. Tempest 2 is good because it'll get them off your tail and uh, fend off any that attack you. But I still haven't learned my lesson. Now, a lot of people in the thread were, well, some people in the thread, were making mention that I don't use long swords as much as I should. So, um, much to your delight, I'm gonna try to use long swords through the post game, and I do. Just not as often, and you'll often see why. But either way, um, this is the big reason why Suchigumo is considered a uh, newbie killer when you're playing Kisuke's campaign, because uh, if you don't have that sword, he's really tough. But if you do, he's a joke. And if you did things a certain way with Momohime's uh, post-game, you could actually make him a joke as well, but uh, yeah. As it stands, him as the first boss I'm fighting, probably not the best decision. Probably shouldn't plan my uh, campaign based on local proximity because I'm feeling lazy. But yeah, aside from uh, aside from his baby, Suchiguma is no big threat. But man, those babies are a huge threat. The neat thing about this is that um. Descent into Misery and Threads of Fate gave us two really good uh, swords for farming combo. Now combo gives you a little bit more extra money at the end of a fight, but there's also an achievement for getting 999 hit combos. So if you're an achievement monkey, like I was for Odin Spear, you might want to use these weapons and try to get the 999 hit combo at some point because there will be very little opportunities to do so later in the post-game. Now there's that attack that we uh, first saw in Kisuke's campaign and now we're seeing in Moeyume. It's actually not too bad. However, there are going to be characters later on in the LP that have a hard time with uh, Suchigumo. Actually, considering the circumstances, I'll just say it right now. The first DLC character for... Uh, for the uh, Genroku Legends, what was her name? Mikei Okoi. She has a really hard time with uh, 
Tsuchigumo just because she doesn't have any capacity to do area of effect attacks. Period. I say that because if you, uh... Well, I shouldn't say that. I say that because part of the post game for the uh, DLC is beating every boss of the main game with the DLC characters. But I've decided not to show that off because it's ultimately a time waster, and we've seen these bosses again. Or we've seen these bosses before, we're seeing them a second time, so there's no need to see them a third through seventh time. But yeah, that's Tsuchigumo. And we get the Cloisone Rosary? Cloisone? I don't know how to pronounce that. But much like our old Rosary, it's a Lifesteal Rosary. Yeah, we get 2% of life instead of 1. Now, a lot of the uh, items that we're going to get from the boss missions, or from the boss refights, are actually better than what we would get from challenge missions. And in some cases, that's not going to make a whole lot of sense. I'll address that when we get to the challenge missions. But here we are at Skull Valley. I still haven't gotten it through my head that I have more swords available to me. But here, I am stopgapped, actually. Now there are... In the middle sword tree, there are other swords that you could get. In order to get these swords, you need to, um... You need to get the second endings before you can continue the main sword... Tr the uh, center sword tree. And, uh... <laughs> I don't realize that for a good while. I actually get all the challenge mission swords, which is way further down the tree than I do b than before getting the uh, alternate ending swords. So you're not gonna see the tree completed until let's take a look at my files. Uh, one, two, I want to say five videos from now. That's when you'll see the center tree uh, completed. But for now, I'm just polishing up Momohime's tree. Because once you beat the game for the first time, you can finish off each, each side of the sword tree. Luckily, the center, the center sword tree doesn't obsolete any of the uh, sides of the tree. They're more uh, alternate use items. I decided to have a little bit of fun with this. The Hammer of Masamune is something I got from a uh, vendor, and it increases attack power based on the number of swords you have. Now that's not a lot per se, but it's enough to merit trying out for a little bit, especially in the post game. But now we have the giant centipedes. Now here's the thing about, um, here's the thing about the post game. Every boss is refightable. I didn't realize that until, uh, after finishing Kisuke's boss refights, but you could refight all the bosses to begin with, even ones that Momohime has already fought. Because of that, that's going to be a little important, because if you need money, you can farm for money here at Giant Centipedes. They give a lot of money. You can also get the 999 hit combo here, just because they are huge sacks of HP and multiple hitboxes. But it's also good for um, grinding EXP. There is going to be a point where EXP does matter. Your level is going to matter for something at one point in the game, which actually kind of kind of frustrated me on my replay of this. But if you need to do it, I would recommend doing it here because in general, the boss refights scale to your level and therefore are infinitely better than uh, doing challenge missions for uh, money. By the way, there's one of the swords we unlocked. It gives us a better sun ring. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but it's still fun to play with. But yeah, the giant centipedes are still just a stack of HP and they're still insanely satisfying to fight because once you start getting that chain reaction going, you can just spam quick draws forever and it's so good. I also have to make mention of something a little bit ahead of time. Due to the fact that I messed up 
a little bit on the sword tree. We're not going to be seeing five, I believe, five different swords as a special arts because of that. Mainly because I did things ever so slightly out of order. Which is an unfortunate circumstance, because there are some uh, deviations from the attack formula, and there are some unique new ones. But I don't think any of the five that I missed are going to be ones that we, uh, that are uh, unique. I think the ones that I missed are just variations on the old formula, much like Divine Blade 3 here. I think the main reason why this is taking longer than it normally does, though, is because with uh, Kisuke's story, it's scaled to his level, and we did do a little bit of extra, so we got slightly ahead on the sword curve. However, for um, for the post-game, everything scales, period, and there's no way to quote-unquote get ahead of the curve because the curve is uh, scaled to match you. So this actually is technically longer than when we did it in the main game. But yeah, giant centipedes are down. That gives us a Rio. So, if you haven't been paying attention to the money counter, a Rio is 10,000 mon. That fight gave us 15,000 mon. Our money problems are gone the moment you get a single mon. But it doesn't stop there. We also got the Imari Lacquerware, an item that gives you more attack power based on spirit. And oh boy, we got a lot of spirit. Right now I'm looking at some of uh, Momohime's other weapons. Give him a quick run through, because we got the time and the luxury to do so. Next up is the Fat Ninja. This is Kisuke's first boss and, uh, <laughs> he's still a chump. So I decided to play a little bit around with some food. The pheasant soup is very nice because if I remember right, yep. This allows you to spam weapon arts without using meter. So if you got something like, say, uh, Meteor Strike 2, you could just spam that forever. Or Holy Comet, sorry. But yeah, with our new swords, we have Benediction, which gives us um, Aura, which already kind of fucking went away. We get Fairy Strike, which gives us Rose Rose's uh, Street Fighter 4 ultimate. And we also have one of the Center Tree swords, the Holy Comet 2. Which I believe I show off at some point in this video. Holy Comet 2, really good! Mainly because it sticks around forever and gives you a bunch of invincibility frames, but the damage is actually respectable. Also, I'm a little irritated because, uh, Fat Ninja here, not a hard boss, but he still managed to punch me. But yeah, much like with Kisuke, he's still a big sack of HP with no real, uh, threat if you know what you're doing. I do find it interesting because, um, looking back on the video footage, in Momohime's story, there is rarely, if any, enemies that get the, uh, attack power boost that you see with the big ninja here, like right here. Momohime's bosses rarely get that, yet all of Kisuke's bosses do. So I'm wondering, is Momohime meant to be easy mode, or did they add her in later and just forget to add that to her bosses? I do like Fairy Strike a lot. I kind of wish the attack power for it was a little bit better. Well, maybe not attack power, because that would be kind of overpowered, but I was ho I was hoping that the stun factor for it would be a bit more powerful. Because it has a lot of good... it has some good utility to it. It just doesn't have any punch. Because that's a weapon I'd use a lot, just for its uh, ability. Also, don't block this guy, shurikens. I don't know why I did that, but it carved up half of my weapon energy in the process. 
Yeah, that quick punch right there, if you're going for the no damage on bosses uh, achievement, that punch will ruin your damn life. It just comes out so fast, and then you and then you just are sad because of it. Now from the big ninja we get slippers. Slippers are weird. They claim to significantly reduce the frequency of enemy encounters, which sounds good, but I tried them out for a bit and I didn't see any difference whatsoever. So I'm kind of wondering if it's uh, not coded at all or is it, is it so insignificant that it just doesn't affect things in the grand scheme of things. Because that sounds great for the post game, you can just walk around and not have to worry about enemies. But it just didn't do anything for me. Yeah, at this point we have completed Momohime's sword tree. However, I still haven't learned. So we're gonna see a lot of scrolling through forges of me trying to figure out why can't I complete the center tree. Now, are you ready for something that seems kind of out of place? Because this is going to be kind of hilarious. I said kind of twice, whoops. This is going to be funny. Now, Boar Stew is pretty good. It's a big HP boost, but it also gives you Auto Recover. Now, Auto Recover is kind of misleading because that is a buff that gives you an... I don't think Ikemi is the term I'm looking for. But when you get hit, you automatically recover, and I and in my head that kind of pops up as Ukemi because of uh, Blaze Blue and Bang Shishigami. But yeah, I think at this point, I think for most of the game, Imari Lacquerware is going to be the better thing to use. And you can actually compare the metrics, but I don't show it off here, unfortunately. If you take a look at your equipment and look at your weapon, you'll see base attack power plus something, that plus is the uh, modifier that the weapon gives. Also, here's the weird boss fight. We are fighting Momohime's sister, Torahime. Naturally, Kisuke fought him, and now we are uh, we're gonna have Momohime beat up her own sister. Fight's not all that different. There are no real swords that affect this, and um, a weird thing to note, this is vengeance. It's supposed to be like a some, some kind of a radial fireball thing. But it doesn't do any damage through proximity, and uh, I didn't see it do any contact damage or retaliation damage. So I don't quite know what Vengeance does. But yeah, sadly, especially with our new swords, Torhime is kind of a chump. Because we are just carving through her HP. She can still bust up your sword something fierce if you're not paying attention because that's what she's designed to do as a boss. But in terms of uh, raw attack power, she honestly doesn't have much going for her. In fact, I was able to stop her right there because I left her with a bar of HP. Or like a sliver of HP, I should say. And before she could run away, I hit her with a drop attack and stopped her in her tracks. I don't know why, but something about this fight right here just makes me laugh. When I got to this fight during recording, I was like, oh shit, wait a minute, I'm beating up my- I'm beating up Momohime's sister, this is silly. The weird thing about Momohime- about uh, Torahime, I don't know why I keep saying Momohime's sister. The weird thing about Torahime is that, um, her- her uh, physics when being juggled are somewhat bizarre by she's a lot floatier than most bosses or enemies. And because of that, it's really hard to continue the lame-ass juggle I do. But because I have Fairy Strike, I can actually keep her in the air unconsciously. Fairy Strike is really fun for the time you have it. I would highly recommend trying it out. Hey, 
And Torahime down. Well, <laughs> that's why I like Fairy Strike. It's so fun. For beating Torahime, we get the Dragon God belt. It's just plus 10 vitality, nothing big. Honestly, really un underwhelming, especially since we have the, uh... I believe we have the plus 10 to everything mask. I just don't use it because uh, I got other cooler things, and I don't need to go one up on a sword tree. Now here we are at a uh, pandemonium. We're gonna fight Chirugi Bishamon. Now, Divine Recovery, I don't quite remember what this does. I believe it's a regenerative effect, much like uh, the sword buffs that we have. But I think because I have a sword buff, it's gonna... It's not gonna take either way. Hey, Bishamon, you're not a threat. He was a chump when you fought him as Kisuke, and he's a chump now. However, he does have a propensity in this fight. I don't know if it's due to the, if it was because of uh, bad luck or what. But he tended in this fight to stay in a corner and then spam AoE attacks like the arrows in that uh, chest slash there. And that kind of frustrated me, honestly. Oh, it never stops being funny when you juggle, juggle Bishamon. Something that size should not be as floaty as he is. Yeah, I don't think I ever realized that, uh... That Vengeance did anything. And here, I didn't even realize that, uh... Fairy Strike and Vengeance override each other. I mean, it kinda makes sense, but, uh, still. It's a little silly now that I think about it. Yeah, but for whatever reason in this fight, he just loves staying in the corner. And it made dodging a little bit harder for me, but not much. I think he does get to break a sword on me once. Man, he's, uh, he's dying a lot faster than Torahime, which is kind of funny. So, I think I covered this before, but someone in the uh, Something Awful thread mentioned that uh, the top HP bar, which covers overall health of the boss, they mentioned that the faster you kill something, the uh, more HP you take off it. I don't think that's the case. Because I kind of sandbag here in order to avoid some of the hits, but uh, that last HP bar, it was, or that last chunk I took off, that was over a half of his remaining HP, which seems a little uh, much for how long it took me to do so. Now for defeating Bishamon, we get an item that I want to say is cool, I really do, but I can't justify any reason for using it, period. You get the cursed Hebiji something? Hebiji? Hebanons. There we go. This significantly raises the odds of a one-hit kill. They don't give you any numbers, so I'm inclined to say it's anywhere between 2 to 5%. Now, that could be cool, because even with a 2 to 5% chance hit rate chance, that's a lot of hits you're doling out. But there are just other, much better equipments that you could get. Namely, Imari Lacquerware. Kitsuki gets a good alternate, which lets you scale off how much souls you have. And we're gonna get a good accessory here for this fight. I'm equipping Pheasant Soup here because I want to see if Soul Salvation actually affects on Block 2. Off the top of my head, I don't think it does, though. Yeah, I wanted to try out the, uh... I was thinking about trying out the, uh, there we go, I'm comparing metrics here. I was looking at the difference between, uh, Hammer of Masamune and Imari Lacquerware, and because of how much spirit I have, Imari Lacquerware is much better. Hello, Dragon God, I am... 
In retrospect, after finishing all the recordings, I'm kinda mad at you. And yes, uh, soul salvation affects blocking. So you can block an innumerable amount of attacks for how long soul salvation takes. So if you prepare the soul salvation meal before this boss fight, you could really lame him out for the initial parts of the fight. Which actually, I gotta admit, helps out a lot. This boss's uh, attacks really can do a number on your swords if you're not paying attention. And just having that ability to block infinitely for as long as I did really helped out a lot. And, um, yeah. A little story about me doing the postgame. I had to grind a specific mission involving this guy. Also, there's a new ability he has. We didn't see that in the new, uh, in the campaign, but he... That thing hurts a lot if it, if all the hits hit you. I think it's a one-hit kill. But yeah, um... I was trying to grind Momohime's levels on a challenge mission involving this guy, and uh... <laughs> oh man. That fireball attack, man. That's some bullshit. It does a, such a good job at breaking your weapon, it's almost astounding. As seen here. Now you can time this better. If you predict his attack and actually attack the fireballs with a combo, you can reflect a good 80% of the fireball volley without damaging your sword. However, he has a mix-up game of four other fireballs. Those cannot be reflected, so if you guess incorrectly, he, uh, he will break your sword either way. Now, I want to say he has a pattern to his fireballs, but I don't quite know what it is because I, I don't pay attention to that kind of thing. But yeah, Dragon God's down, still puts up a good fight. And we get a really good accessory from him. The Bracelet of the Diva King. Now, this bracelet is great for most of the game because... It sets your attack power at 700 for all your weapons. That means that dinky little weapon at the beginning of the game, viable in the end game. Now, if I had done this mission first before fighting Suchigumo, I could have used the quick draw blade and trivialized him. But I didn't realize this. I actually forgot about this weapon entire or this accessory entirely. This is a good weapon. When you get into the post game of Muramasa the Demon's Blade, do Dragon God first. It'll make everything else easier. Speaking of, here we go with another boss. Hello, Sayo. I'm gonna enjoy this. Look at how much damage we're doing! We did one auto combo and took off nearly a third of our HP. Now, I would talk more about this boss, but I do gotta mention for uh, you, the viewer's sake, I gotta say, for the boss fights, you do not fight the other play character's uh, end boss. Momohime cannot fight uh, the Shogun slash uh, Inugami, and Kisuke cannot fight uh, Fudomiyo. So if you wanna, I'm gonna, I'm saying this mainly to save you the effort of doing those dungeons again for no discernible reason, because when you get there, there is no, uh, there's no boss gate, period. There's not even a reward. You just get there and feel kind of stupid. Oddly enough, the DLC characters all can fight both Fudo Miyo and uh, Inugami slash Shogun, which is odd in my opinion, and also kind of frustrating, but it's a thing you can do. But yeah, Sayo's kind of a joke here. I don't even respect her. Mainly because of how frustra frustrating she was for uh, several instances of the game. She has a pattern, I just can't parse it for the life of me. Well, I shouldn't say parse so much as react to it. And I do... I think I did figure out how to um, get her off her crow... Uh, her little crow uh, thing where she just flies and does attacks from her... Uh, from her parachute thing. You have to either overwhelm her with damage or reflect one of her big bombs into her. That'll break her from that uh, phase. 
And for beating her, we get the Abacus of Infinite Wealth, which I find funny because for whatever reason, her attire reminds me of kind of a merchant. Mainly the weird little thing she keeps on her back. Now the Abacus of Infinite Wealth is another modifier. This accessory, once I get to it, increases attack based on money. So if you were to say, oh, I don't know, farm the centipedes for a long time, you could probably cap out weapon damage with this. But yeah, that's uh, that's all of Momohime's boss fights against Kisuke bosses. Next up, vice versa, Kisuke fights Momohime bosses.